Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Emma Cunnington and I am a woodwind teacher who specialises in clarinet, saxophone and flute. Today's video is going to be on what you need in order to start your clarinet journey, whether that's the instrument itself, anything you need to think about with mouthpieces and ligatures and any accessories so you read, any cleaning things that you may need throughout learning to play the clarinet. Okay, so let's talk about the models of clarinet, which I'd recommend. Your teacher may recommend different ones to me. This is just what I recommend when I am starting out students with clarinets. So first things first, if you're starting out, look for instruments that are plastic. A lot of people may not realise, but wooden, wooden instruments are harder to play, hard to get a note out of. So my favourite model, which I personally started on, which is a plastic clarinet, is buffet b12 it is a reputable reliable in uh, well, model and it stands the test of time i've had one since uh well for a good i think it's 12 years now and it still will play a note today with regular servicing obviously and keeping you know good good care of it but they are reliable they'll get you from a to b good sound and good kind of key worker mechanisms. Now this brand Buffet is French. There are some differences between uh, French brands and German brands uh, with what we call the Bohm system and the, the German system. But you need to be looking for instruments that are most likely Bohm, because in, in the UK at least, there's a tendency for people to play using the French system. So you're looking for a system that has keys at the bottom that look like this, as opposed to the ones which look a little bit like saxophone keys. So if you look into a one of my other videos you'll be able to see what a saxophone looks like you'll notice it's got like kind of bigger keys with little rubber rollers on that's that's the german system check with your, with your teacher of course if if um if you're unsure but you're most likely they're going to be looking for a french clarinet so buffet b12 good standard instrument when i bought mine when the, if you're going to buy it new it was going to be about 400 pounds i got mine second hand from a woodwind seller in my local area and i would definitely recommend that you reach out to local woodwind sellers in your area join a facebook group i think there's things such as uk musician swap sell etc and even just posting in a, in a music forum ask who is in the area there's plenty of places I can already think of in, in Yorkshire and myself, a good few places which you could go and explore some options with. So that's your Buffet B12. If you are going to buy it secondhand off something like eBay or Gumtree, you do need to watch out, as I said, for the amount of bits you're getting. So your, your bell, your barrel, etc. and all that. And you also need to be watching out for the pads. So this goes for any, any model that I've mentioned in the rest of the video, but be pads. So there's some little kind of orange things on mine that you might be able to see there and there. You need to get as many pictures as you can of these pads. If, for example, there is one missing, even if it's on one of these bottom ones, like down here. So one of these bottom ones down here. Let me just try and yeah, we'll go with that one. These ones here, or even um, this one here. That's if the, if they're missing you will not be able to play a certain amount of notes. And if there's any pads missing up here, some ones which are often missing are the what we call the A key um, and the G sharp key. So the side one here as well, see if I can show you all that. So make sure if you can, and it's hard to kind of tell that there is something underneath that. It might be white in colour if it's a Buffet B12 or your kind of student um, instruments because they are slightly different materials. I've got leather pads on my instrument which make it uh, kind of seal better. But for a student instrument, you need to make sure that they've got all the pads on there so that you can play the notes because they will not come out if there are no pads. So that's kind of the, the first two things to look out for. And additionally, make sure there's no cracks in the instrument. It's unlikely with plastic to see cracks because if it's going to crack, it will crack very badly. Um, but make sure there's no cracks. You don't want to buy an instrument and then for one day you to accidentally knock it and then it well disintegrates before your very eyes so that's your buffet b12 as well as a bit of info as to what to look for if you are buying second hand now just on that topic as well almost forgot these things here corks now if you are near a, a, a woodwind repairer or seller they might be able to repair this for you if an instrument does not have one of these but this bit of cork here this this kind of well, it's, it's like the cork that you get in in your, in your champagne bottles uh, to some extent. If it's not there or if it's damaged, 
you won't be getting a good seal again. You need to make sure that the whole instrument is kind of airtight from joint to joint. So from kind of each bit going into each bit, it needs to be airtight. So if it hasn't got any cork on it, or if it's looking a little bit kind of ragged, raggedy, not, not great, maybe just consider whether you do want to go down that route because you, you will have to in well pay for some repairs there already before you even start playing so next model i'd recommend is the yamaha 250 right now at the moment there seems to be a 255 which is kind of like the next step or the the next model which is being produced by yamaha so yamaha as mentioned in the saxophone video very reputable woodwind brand reliable durable they've got some good instruments now the differences between these two instruments is somewhat the sound with the yamaha as well the plastic is brushed with with well some brushes or a, a special effect to make it look like it's wooden which is quite a nice little addition nothing in particular though um that that will affect the sound but the thing that is a little bit different is on your 250s and 255s the keys are often nickel with silver plating and that silver is going to kind of reverberate when you are playing the instrument and create kind of a warmer sound as per what yamaha recommend on there and mention on their website so your 25 Oh, or your 255 good instruments they'll they'll get the the job done other ones which you could look into for that aren't these kind of two top brands are your jupiter clarinets they're pretty uh, standard durable again we'll get the job done at the time of filming these are kind of retailing for 400 pounds new and um, second hand you could be looking at half of that it just depends entirely and going back to the uh, ycl that one was retailing at the time of filming, so um, March 2021, at around about 400 to 500 pounds, depending on where you're buying it from. And another one is a John Packer clarinet. They are great for instruments that are durable, that are going to take a lot of bashes. So if you've got perhaps a younger student or if you're a younger person wanting to play the clarinet and you want in one that's going to last if if you potentially maybe a little bit clumsier or you, you might accidentally knock it off if you're not uh, not too sure you've, where you've put it down and that's something which I find often with students having to remind them not to put it on the table stood up um because it, it's like a, a a danger kind of waiting to happen um but th those are pretty durable too not potentially the most um loveliest of tones but they will get the job done and these instruments, it depends entirely on where you're getting them from and if it's secondhand or whatnot. On eBay, John Packers, from what I've seen, can be going from anywhere from 60 to £140. But it, it depends entirely on the model, whether it's been used beforehand and, well, whether it's, it's playable as well, whether it needs any work doing to it. So that is your models. As mentioned, your wooden clarinets, wouldn't recommend them straight away because it's quite quite a bit of resistance. What I will say though is if you are getting to that point around grade five, grade six, where you maybe do want to step up, recommendations, ask your teacher. They are going to know a lot of instruments or a lot of models, a lot of brands, and you may even have to, or you, I'd recommend even, going and trying some instruments in person if possible, due to different restrictions, of course. One instrument or one model that stands out is the E13 uh, by Buffet. They're, they're pretty good intermediate kind of level instruments. Um, again, go try range. They're all going to sound different. They're all going to have different qualities. So the last thing I will end on is when you buy a clarinet, aim to have or aim to purchase an instrument that has an adjustable thumb rest so this here it's not kind of glued into clarinet you can move it up and down i just undo it slightly there we go so it's to fall out so it will go up and down basically um it will come out you can move it around depending on who is playing it and it's good for if you've got younger students who maybe have growing hands eventually it just helps you helps you to keep up with them um, well, with, with the student, as well as not everyone's going to have the same shaped hands. You may need to move it up or down depending on the, the size of your hands. If you're going to get one that's fixed, 
it's going to be a little bit more difficult to, to adjust because it's literally just in the same place, which could cause hand cramps and whatnot. But that is something just to keep in the back of your mind as alongside all these other things too. But that's something which I've noticed over the last few years I've been teaching, something to watch out for because it, especially if um, you've got a plastic one, it can be a little bit harder to change that into an adjustable one um, just because it's quite a fragile material if you're drilling into it. So that is your models. Longer than I expected to, to spend on this, but that's your models. Let's move on to your mouthpieces and your ligatures. Okay, so this section of the video is on your mouthpieces and your ligatures. Now, you will be getting a stock mouthpiece if you're getting a new clarinet, or even if you're getting a secondhand clarinet. That one will do you for a long time. It's one which will be free blowing, works with the instrument, I'd stick to it. However, if you're getting a secondhand instrument and you feel a bit uncomfortable potentially playing on a mouthpiece that someone else has used, you may look into buying another one. The stock mouthpieces you can get from Buffet, you can get them from Yamaha. The Buffet's a bit more expensive, about £55 for a clarinet mouthpiece, but the Yamaha's ranging from anywhere from like £35 to £45, uh, depending on the model. So that's your, your mouthpieces. What I would recommend is if you do buy a mouthpiece, um, get yourself a mouthpiece protector. It stops your teeth from kind of etching into the plastic at the top of the mouthpiece and it increases its longevity through doing that so that's your mouthpieces you can also buy mouthpieces secondhand it is something which perhaps the more professional clarinetist will do when you're looking for secondhand mouthpieces just make sure that the cork's intact and that you can't see any kind of chips on the tip of the of the mouthpiece again if you are starting out as a beginner i wouldn't be looking at um upgrading to a particular model just get a, a bog standard model um because these different mouthpieces will do different things they'll be slightly more difficult or easy to play create different tones uh, mine for example is a mouthpiece that creates a darker tone and also makes me less kind of sharp in pitch um but it's, it's definitely something which you can look at maybe at grade five or grade six, go and test out a few if possible due to the um, different restrictions that may be in place. But for now, stock mouthpieces, just grab yourself one of those if you haven't already got one already included with the instrument. So this brings us on to ligatures. Now, when you start, often you'll get kind of your bog standard ligature, as mentioned in the saxophone video, um, which is just kind of one with screws. These will do you, again, for a very long time. When you get to that grade five or six level though, you may want to consider changing it. Now, one which I have had for many years now actually from my grade six is this Rovner uh, Dark Ligature. This one, I think at the time of filming, they, they're they costing kind of around you 30 to 40 pounds. When I bought this um, many, many years ago, it was about 30 pounds. It has gone up slightly. However, it has stood the test of time. It works incredibly well despite the fact it must have been used thousands of times now i played my um university recital on this ligature it's it's a good ligature it will get you a good deep sound if you're wanting that now as a beginner i wouldn't necessarily recommend these sh you know straight away um again that grade grade five grade six level is kind of where you might want to stop thinking about your tone but as a beginner you just need something that's going to get you a good sound so your standard ligature you can get these if your client didn't come with it for you know an inexpensive amount kind of five to ten pounds um even for a buffet one but further down the line definitely consider the different ligatures so this one is your roving a dark ligature um just a screw on the top slips on the the mouthpiece quite well tightens very nicely and you're ready to go it's 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 great now another mouthpiece which i have been experimenting in the mouthpiece another ligature i've been experimenting with has been the bg ld9 now this is one i mentioned in my saxophone video because it can work on both instruments which is a very nice little addition so this one similar in concept to your roving ligature screws on the top It'll just kind of screw onto the, the clarinet. And the difference with these metal ligatures is that, let's see if I can get it to, to do it properly, is that it kind of hovers um, around the clarinet as opposed to kind of squeezing the entire clarinet mouthpiece. So you'll notice on here that there's just the two bits of rubber at the top. 
kind of a bit of something on the side there and on the side there that's touching the clarinet and at the bottom um, there's just those two rows of kind of studs there which are touching the reed so it's very minimal the mouthpiece and the reed are allowed to kind of vocalize and the ligature is just holding those in place now these ones do come in a range of colors or a range of uh, lacquer like, like yours, i must say and um, this one is a rose gold one you can get a gold one a silver one and there's a different kind of gold one as well which you can purchase they all have different qualities i find this one's quite nice and bright free blowing and it creates a different timbre to these fabric lig ligatures again play around with them if you're at that level of grade four or grade five well, grade five or grade six go and see if you can try them out somewhere obviously with the restrictions at the moment that might be not as as, as possible but often places will let you kind of rent out a ligature for a little bit to see if you like it and send it back and which then they'll probably quarantine it and clean it and whatnot for the next person um but ligatures they're definitely a nice little way to kind of increase um or develop your tone without a massive kind of um, investment, potentially through a new instrument or even a new barrel. That's something I'll do a later video on um, in the future. So that's your ligatures um, and, and your mouthpieces. And the last thing I will say is if you are buying a mouthpiece, you should get a cap included. I definitely recommend getting a cap just so that it fits nicely in your, in your case. Um, it's just something that I've I've noticed over the years some people kind of lose the caps it's just nice to keep everything all together keep that mouthpiece from getting bashed say if your clarinet case um the, the screws on it broke something that's something that happened to me when I was younger um walking down the street bashed my clarinet case on something and the whole entire thing fell onto the floor now if I hadn't have had my mouthpiece protector on like this my mouthpiece may have gone straight first into the concrete and bashed the tip of the mouthpiece which would have made it unplayable so make sure you've got your mouthpiece cover on or included i guess with um with your mouthpiece it will say often on the description whether it is or not which is something just to make sure that you have got you can buy these replacement caps um they don't have to be specific to the to the like the brand of, of mouthpiece or ligature you've got uh, but they're, they're fairly inexpensive so that is your ligatures and your mouthpieces in a nutshell. So this part of the video is going to be on your clean accessories and your reeds, which I'm gonna start with first. So your reeds, often when you start the clarinet, you may not realize that there's an extra expense. You have to buy reeds in order to play the instrument because without it, you will get no sound out. So these reeds, um, there's a range of different kind of, um, of brands. There's your Juno, your Vandoran, your Daddario, your Rico. Some others as well and within those brands there's different kind of um models or different versions so the ones which i quite like um which i wouldn't necessarily recommend for a beginner are your van doren uh, v56 classic which are quite a nice dark sounding uh read what i'd recommend if you are first starting out though is your van doren classic kind of blue packet ones which look a bit like sweet packets i think um and if you're going to go with those i'd get a 1.5 maybe a two if, you, if you've got a particularly good kind of um you know bit of lung power but a one and a half will often start people off well now with your reeds as well ricos if you're getting into more of a jazzy kind of clarinet style i might think about moving more towards those your Van Dorans do do a good job, but I tend to find they're best for your classical clarinet playing. So your Ricos, if you're starting out on those, you should do bog standard Ricos, nothing special, not a jazz variation or anything. I'm starting at two on those. They're a little bit less um, resistant or strong as your Van Dorans. Um, so that that's what I'd go for. Now, you'll notice I'm waving around this little box. This isn't included when you get a reed or a reed box. Now, this is a... A reed box that i bought this is something that you don't have to get as a beginner it, it's nothing major i think about it later on it's just so i can rotate my reeds because i would recommend you changing your reed um due to it wearing out but also for hygiene hygiene reasons potentially every kind of two to three months i know some people that have um played it for many many months even not years and i find that personally i wouldn't be able to do that i'd find it a little bit uh, unhygienic but also your reed strength it, it won't be what it was before as you play your reeds they will wear out they will become what we call tinny 
they won't sound as nice as they were. So you may need to change them about so that you can keep your tone nice and full. And also, again, for hygiene reasons, what I will mention on that front is make sure you don't eat anything particularly soon before you play a read because let's just say that the, 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 the taste and the particles of whatever you rate will be on that read for a while to come. So um, that's kind of your reads. Um, again, you can buy them in kind of singles, uh, depending where you buy them from. That could be anywhere from like £2.50 all the way up to £3.90 or as boxes. You can buy boxes reads um, in like the 10s. You can do 50s, but as a beginner, I'd probably go with maybe just buying a couple of single reads and then buying a box once you have been playing for a few months. Because once you have bought a box, if you then realise that actually I need a two, you've got a load of one and a half, which, you know, you've bought and you can't do much with. So maybe just buy your two or three or four single ones just for now. And then later on, maybe consider getting that box of 10. Now, box of 10, depending on the model, um, I've found range from kind of 25 to 30 pounds. There are ones which are excessively more, but it's just something to uh, to bear in mind. Okay, so that is your reads. I would also potentially further down the line, look into reed protectors. They're little kind of bits of plastic uh, or bits of kind of cling filmy plastic that go on the reed. Um, just to kind of prolong the, the longevity of it. Again, it's not essential, so not the end of the world if you don't do it, but it'd be good if you if you wanted to keep a reed going, if it's a particularly good reed, stick one of those on it and it'll last that, just that little bit longer. So that is reeds. Let's go on to cleaning products and little bits which are helpful and handy. Now, as a beginner, you may get recommended cork grease. This is my Rico cork, cork grease I've had for many years. Uh, you stick it on the joints of the clarinet every so often, just at the tops a little bit, just to keep them nice and kind of movable when you're putting each bit on. So you might work it into it and it keeps it nice and kind of slidey so that for example, if you've been playing for a long time and the cork kind of swells up, you're more likely to get it off than for it to, to stay on and then it'd be stuck um, on like this until the, the cork kind of, um, well, goes down, I guess. <laughs> Which has happened to a, a few people I know. Um, when that happens, you often have to kind of run it under the tap with cold water or that's what we found worked and just kind of be a little bit gentle with it when you're trying to pull it apart. Um, but keeping your clarinet greased on the on the, the kind of the cork the, the tendon joints would is is a good idea um now as a beginner rico or whatever cork grease i think there's bandstand cork grease which is quite good i'd get that quite inexpensive i wouldn't be paying more than maybe two to three pounds for that if not less if you're getting kind of a, a, the bandstand kind of mass produced stuff now if you get into a little bit later on you can't actually see the brand on it anymore because I've used it that many times. But this stuff is kind of trumpet um, oil grease um, or trumpet trumpet grease. And it's by a company called Bark. And at the time of filming, I believe they still make this. Um, I've had this for, oh goodness, at least five and a half years. And I've only used that much. And this is when I've allowed other people to use it too, when I was at university and during my PGCE too. So... When you get into those higher levels, maybe consider something like this if your instrument is a is a you know a better model. This will work a lot nicer on those those kind of joints. Um, it's you might have noticed when I put this on, this stuff kind of comes out in little bits. It's not as um, uniform, whereas this is just a nice gloopy stuff that will get things kind of nice and lubricated, ready for you to put it on to play and for you to take it off. Um, this stuff though, it can be a little bit on the stickier side. If you get it on clothes or something, it's a little bit risky. Whereas this stuff, um, again, it's, it's an oil. It's going to be a bit hard to wash out, but it's easy to kind of pick off as opposed to this stuff. But if you're a beginner, go for this. Okay, your, your normal cork grease. A little bit more advanced, look into your bark um, kind of trumpet grease. Um, see, see what you can get it or where you can get it from. So that's your grease. Next thing I'd look into as well, something which your tutor may recommend is very surprisingly, cigarette papers. Now at the time of filming, these are kind of, you know, anywhere from 10p to 20p. 
Now, these are good for if you get kind of a gargle in your clarinet. So often on the A key here at the top, you'll hear a little bit of that bleh kind of sound, almost like there's, there's water there. Now, it's what we call in the clarinet profession as condensation, otherwise known as spit. But if that happens and you've pulled through your clarinet with a cleaning swab, which we'll look at in a minute, it's not coming out. You grab one of these, you tear off the sticky bit so that it doesn't kind of stick to your clarinet. That wouldn't be very good. Grab that, stick it underneath very gently and then kind of move it around a little bit, making sure not to rip it until all that water has gone from underneath that key. And then you'll find that it plays a lot easier. That gurgling is no longer there because it's all been taken out by the cigarette paper. And that is something that I would definitely recommend you get in, um, especially if you're a player who has braces, you'll be producing a lot more spit and you'll find that you get that gargling happening perhaps more often than if you didn't so next thing that i just mentioned then was the cleaning swab now you probably will get one when you get your clarinet if it's a new one probably get one included if you don't go to your local music shop ask for their advice they might be able to rec recommend you one there's brands such as i think it's Hylin, um van doren do one i've got a van doren one here um a lot there's lots of different brands ones which are fairly inexpensive you know you're, you're three to five pounds then there's ones which are a little bit more expensive such as this one uh, it's a nice van doren um kind of microfiber one i do need to get a new one at some point but this one has lasted me again kind of four years i'll just wash it every so often uh, and just see you know see where it's getting to so at the moment there's a little bit of wear and tear as you can see it's just a little bit looking a little bit not so good but these ones cost around about £20. They're microfiber, they're nice, um, they don't kind of scratch the inside of your clarinet. Perhaps this is more for if you've got those wooden clarinets, they're very good at mopping up anything that's inside your clarinet. If you've just got your bog standard kind of plastic clarinet, just go to your local music shop, see what they recommend. I would avo avoid anything that's leather, um, as I've, I've found them to be a little bit odd when pulling through your clarinet, but so look for something that's like a, a cloth or something that's... Um, not not fibrous, you don't want bits coming off inside the clarinet, but something that's going to mop it up in a fairly decent way. Now, if, you know, it's a, a case of you get the choice between a more expensive one and maybe a leather one, I would go with the more expensive one. It's not going to hurt your clarinet. So that is kind of your cleaning, um, kind of in a nutshell. Now, you could wash your mouthpiece every so often with maybe a little bit of, of gentle kind of, soap or whatever just as a bit of an extra addition i need to do that as you can see um just to keep it you know spit free because it, it does get um if it it does get a little bit kind of gross after a while but with your clarinet i wouldn't wash it or anything like that i just recommend it for a kind of a yearly or or every two years service the person who is doing the service will depending on the material of the clarinet either oil it or give it a quick clean with whatever products they have on hand as well as the keys i'll give them a quick polish um so that's something just to bear in mind as well you may have to service your clarinet often instruments will come with some kind of service or warranty so look into that if you're buying new i know there's a few big retailers that sell a variety of woodwind instruments that will offer kind of your service at the end of the kind of the first year you've had it for, for free or included in the price um but it's something just to just to explore potentially so that is your cleaning products and additional accessories kind of done so thank you for watching my video on how to start your clarinet journey whether it's the model the instrument the accessories the mouthpieces and ligatures all those things so if you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could give this video a like and if possible, subscribe. I'd really appreciate that too. If you've got any other questions, either comment below or find me at www.emma-music.co.uk. That's my website. Find my contact form and, uh, and put something in there or message me on the little chat box at the bottom of the web page. I look forward to hearing from you if you've got any questions. But in the meantime... I hope they have a fantastic start to your clarinet journey and happy practicing. See you later.